Okay, so here is the next question. I'm going to shine this light on my face for a second, and we'll... Woo, there it is. <laughs> I understand that you are divorced, and so am I. Why do you think we manifested this terrible experience? Thanks. Why do we think we manifested this terrible experience? First of all, in all three of my my marriages, there were beautiful moments, too. They weren't all just terrible. You know, the marriages, I wouldn't have married them if there wasn't some, some sort of expression of love there. I, I, you know, I've been married three times. I've divorced three times. And the lesson that I learned in all of them was the same lesson. It was don't give up who you are. Always be your authentic self because no one can love you for you if you're not you. See, you're looking for unconditional love. And if they want to change you, that's a condition. If you're changing for them, that's your condition. So what, what, what love is, is, is God, right? And we're here to experience our God source, right? And loving relationships are, are a beautiful expression of God if they're truly unconditionally loving. The interesting thing is a lot of people are searching for that loving feeling and then they feel they have to get married. They feel they have to. And what they're actually trying to do is lock in love. They're saying, oh, I'm married now. We're locked in. I'm locked in love, right? And it it's like trying to trap God. You know, there are you know there are other marriages that aren't that way at all that are beautiful and loving and lasting forever, and then there are people like Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn who never got married but have like one of the most famously loving relationships in Hollywood, right? <clears throat> there are people who never get married and then have that beautiful experience, but society has created this thing called marriage, and I say that specifically, society has. You know, religions have as well. And legally, marriage is about getting the paperwork right so the money gets divvied properly and the property and the assets get divvied properly. That's the legal reason for marriage. But most people get married because they love somebody. And many people get married because, oh, I'm married now. I'm getting married now. So I'm, I won. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be alone anymore. I'm not going to be afraid anymore. And... You might be the person who's getting married for that reason. And your spouse might be the person who's getting married for that reason. Um, I had one wife who, who, who married me to, I I truly believe to please her father. You know, she wanted somebody who would come in and, and take care of her and her family. And, and her father wanted someone who would, you know, live up to his expectations, and and I, in that marriage, absolutely one hundred percent changed myself to, to match her father. Right, that marriage failed because I was no longer me. I was what her father wanted. Right. Another another one of my marriages was um, to someone who was extremely narcissistic, and extremely terrified of of being alone. She had real issues with uh, abandonment from, from her childhood. Actually, I had two wives like that. <laughs> um, had real issues with abandonment from her childhood and terrified of being alone. And then when the marriage happened, I literally uprooted my entire life, quit my career, did all kinds of things to please her, and she still wasn't pleased because it, she couldn't live up to what she expected. And those expectations were her conditions. And, my, and I changed myself for the conditions. So that was how that worked. The same with my, with my, with my, other, my, my other wife, my last wife. She, was, she is still massively narcissistic. The world revolves around her, and if, and if you don't think exactly like she does, then you're 
um, a bad person and you're wrong. And um, and that sounds bitter, and, but and it is a little bitter because I once again did not learn that lesson. I'm a little. I was a little bitter about the idea that I was in another situation where I was being taken advantage of um, t- by not allowing myself to be not being loved for me. Um, and those marriages are were all a representation of me not being my authentic self. And people say, would you ever get married again? I, I'm, I don't shut it down, but I would never get married to anybody who wants me to change for them. I'll never get into a relationship. You know, I would pr- much prefer to not be married and be in an unconditionally loving relationship than be married. You know, We can create a, a legal document later on for assets, but you know, <laughs> you know, that's, that's just, in my mind, the whole concept of marriage has become a, um, in, in, in many ways, it's, it's something external from love because, you know, we have a ceremony to prove we love each other. You don't need to prove you love each other. Just love each other. You know, we have a ceremony so that we can then get the legal documents to get our da- assets in order. That's, that's, you know, dealing with the money, right? But, it, it has nothing to do with loving someone for who they are or being loved for who you are. You know, and as far as divorce is concerned, why did we go through that, those situations? Probably because we stopped being our th- authentic self. We, ch- we didn't love ourselves unconditionally. We didn't, you know, we tried to change for them or vice versa. Or you tried to change somebody else. So if you try to change somebody else, that's just as... as Conditional of love as 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 the other, you know. You meet somebody; they're almost perfect. Well, if they're not perfect, they're not perfect, right? You have to accept people for who they are, and if you love them for who they are, you like them with their with their their warts as well. You know, they like them, love them no matter what. So, why do we have those terrible experiences? Because we created the terrible experiences in some form. We create our, our, our reality. We create our outcome. We create our life. What you think you become, you create your world. And if you think you have to change, then you're not actually believing your love is unconditional. And that, that's huge, you know. Love yourself unconditionally first. You know, And Nietzsche said it best when he said that to, a, to have a successful relationship, you have to foster the friendship first. Most In most marriages, people don't treat each other like friends. And you have to foster the friendship first. You know, I, I've, I've been in relationships where the friends were treated better than I was from day one. Yeah. And, you know, I got to a point in, in my life where, where it's like, I don't. I don't ever look for an, a date. I never, never look for someone to come into my life. I allow them to come in, and if if it's in the cards, I, I'm not desperate to find someone to to be married to, because I'm not. I don't need that in my life. Do you? Do you need that that expression? Do you do you regret the things that have happened and the divorces that you've been through? And if you regret them, did you not learn from them? Did you not learn why they happened? And if that's if you don't know why they happened, then that's what you really need to assess. I mean, your question really is asking why they happened. Why did we have those terrible experiences? But you have to come to your belief about it. I just told you mine. But you have to come to your your belief about it because your belief is your experience. And focusing on a terrible divorce is not letting it go. It's anchoring you to a negative experience. So focus on, I am living a joyful, loving life. And sometimes when you live a joyful, loving life, someone will come into your life who is joyful and loving. You know, And if you decide that you want to have a joyful, loving relationship, you can manifest that too. But the key is remain yourself. Be your authentic self. Follow your own joys and passions. And if someone comes along who wants you to stop 
living your joys and passions, they're not the one for you. And that's my thought on that. You have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye. Thank you, my friends, for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please make sure that you've subscribed and you like it, you share it, but also comment below it. Let's get this community talking about these topics and, and spreading this information out far and wide so that we can change the world for the better. Thank you.